go, you're fine. You're fine, breathe. First of all, there's no science in, 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 in fighting a war. It's luck. There's, no, there's nothing going to bring you out. There's no skill that you might have that is going to break you. Up. You're just either lucky or unlucky. That's what it all along. It's unpredictable. That's what it is. You can't predict the, the war. As I used, to, I used to say all the time, it's a, there's no future. And the present is unpleasant. That, that's it. On the radio, they raged. If a person dropped out, you'd be four guys wanted to take that position, place, and fight because they thought this mission was going to be a fantastic mission. Oh, there was a room. You got to remember that there's that the, the, at the beginning you think that this this great, you know, you, the Americans were great. We all wanted to go. It was like it wasn't like somebody who thought, well, hell, you know, this the, it was a great mission. We're going to flank and land, land Africa, and the people going to Swiper going to come back. It was a nobody. We thought it was going to be a great run. But then we got into it. Hell, you know, it turned out to be a disaster because they shot the living Christ out of us. That's all, let's face it. They learned how to. F they didn't come back from the rear anymore. Now they started f hitting you from the front. Coming from the front, they'd come in mass, and they could hit you because you you had you had a plane like this, a plane here, and a plane here, down like, and you they could you got a better chance of hitting somebody from the nose. First of all, they wanted to shoot down the lead plane. That's the the, the, the first thing they wanted to do because they knew that that. that they had discovered the fact that we all dropped off a, a unison on, on a target. We didn't drop individually. And that, so that they, the lead plane was the person that was going to lead the bomb and going to drop the first bombs, and they would all salvo off of that lead bomb, bomb. So they would always target the lead plane if they could. But like anything else, you know, it, it, they had their problems too. The aerial gunnery is not uh, exact science, I'll tell you that right now. You're going at 500 miles an hour, and you're going at 160 miles an hour. Your close, rate of closure is unbelievable. So that... It's, uh, they're having a tough, tough problem, and, and, uh, but, you know, like anything else, there's a lot of them, and a lot of us, and so a lot of people get hit, that's all. I must have, I don't know how many different, I didn't, I couldn't claim anybody after that. I shot at more planes than you can believe at. All I can smell is uh, the ammunition you're using. Ammunition, all on the floor like this, just covered. The, the guys in the back, the tail gun, didn't fire a gun one whole time. They didn't come from that way. They came from the front all the time, and as a, we were sending the navigator, we got ammunition from the from the radio room, and got ra ammunition from the from the tail gunner, because we were running out of it. They were just firing these guns continually. 
Yeah, we lost that day. They said between Swineford and us, we lost 70 planes, if I remember correctly. Some ditch in the channel, so it didn't run out of gas. To, to offset the loss of all these planes, you had to crane something. You did something well. We had to tell the public, you know, that they shot down 300 enemy fighters. That's not true. And they know it's not true. It's a, it's a strange thing about what certain conditions do to you and your mental attitude towards life. It changes completely. As I say, the war is an impersonal war. You drop your bombs, you kill all these people. The most important thing you've got to remember is that are those people down the ground are building things to kill you. To tell you the truth, I didn't feel bad about it at all. I didn't. I didn't think about, I didn't think about kids. I didn't think about women, old ladies. Or I didn't think about that. I just thought, hell, you know, kill these people, end the goddamn war and go home. That's the whole attitude. Get home. Get it over with. Get home. What it, what it takes to do it, do it. You know, you're pretty ethical in many ways, but during the war, your ethics kind of disappear because you're not thought of life, forget it. You're not, you know, it's not that important anymore. Where you, as a citizen, life was very important to me, the other person's life. During the war, the other person's life was worth uh, as, so much as you knew them, that was it. You know, you lose, you lose that you know, sense of... of uh, not even mortality, but because you know, you, you know, you're not gonna, might not make it or make it. But your, your ethics is about, you know, your thought about it, your fellow man. You know, when you really think about your fellow, you think about, about good people, doing good things for people. The war, that all changes. You're not thinking about doing good people. In fact, to tell you the truth, you lose a good friend, you don't mourn him forever. You, you know what you say? Thank God it's not me. Now, well, that's a hell of a thing to say, but that's the, really what you feel because. You're still alive. He, he, just, he just hit the ditch. They didn't make it.